I praise the Lord, everybody. How we doing today? Great. Hallelujah. It's good. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Might be a good day to be out of the, out of the house too, because it's uh, one of the few days that rained for a while. So. Amen. Happy about that. Oh, now see. <laughs> This is a faith church, and you're supposed to speak things as they be not as though they be. <laughs> no rain doesn't make you feel refreshed. Not when you get like 10 days in a row. That's right. Makes you depressed. Hallelujah. Well, this is no place to be depressed. This is a place to praise the Lord. So. Amen. Hallelujah. Get them drug in here. <laughs> Stand your feet and we'll pray. Almighty God, we enter into this service today. We thank you, Lord, that we thank you that we woke up today and, we, and you gave us another day to praise you, another yes. day to serve you, another day to love you, another day to love the people around us, another day to tell people about the great love and mercy that you have poured upon the earth through, your, through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We're here today to worship you. We're here today to honor and lift up the name of Jesus, our King and our Lord and our Savior. Father, don't let us leave this place today the same way that we came in. Amen. But Lord, transform us and change us more into the image of Christ than we ever have been before. Open our hearts today. Open our minds today that we might receive from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Father, thank you that we... If we have any faults, we can confess them and you forgive us. You forgive us. We can enter into this to, to praise and worship and into your presence today with clean hands and a pure heart by the blood of Christ. And we give you thanks, glory, and honor in what you will accomplish. Yes. Father, we surrender to your will today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good and His mercy endures forever. Amen. 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 Don't raise your hand. Anybody been in jail? <laughs> you know, you know, you, I only know this what I've heard. They put you in jail because you did something wrong. And you just pray that somebody loves you enough to come bail you out. We sang a song about our Redeemer lives. Amen. Jesus didn't just come and bail us out. Amen. You know, when you post bail, I think you, you go you go find a bail bondsman and you post. They give, you got to pay 10%. And they post the bail, and then that 10% is just a guarantee that you'll come back and face the judge. But Jesus, he's our redeemer. Amen. He bought us back. Amen. He didn't just pay 10% of the price. He paid all the price. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. he paid all the price, and he didn't, he didn't pay the price just to guarantee that you'd come back and face the judge. He said, I'll go face the judge for you. Amen. And you won't have to face that judge. Hallelujah. But we can come boldly before the, to the throne of grace to receive grace. We have access to Almighty God. We can go right into the judge. And we don't have any fear of the judge because Jesus has already redeemed us. He's paid 100% of the price. Amen. 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 That's how good our Father is to us. That's how much He loved us. Hallelujah. I just really feel like I want to pray that oh, God wants it. Is there anybody here? That, I know I'm, I'm going to ask. Is Dad here? You back there? I'm going to, you, I can't see that. I'm going to have him come up here. I'm going to have him stand in for a guy that he knows. Um, is there anybody here you'd like to be anointed for, uh, you know, by, for anointed to be healed today? Uh, just come on up. I want to, I want to pray uh, today for the sick. They afflicted. Um, well, I got a I got a text from one of the guys who who works for us, and he's and we, he's he's a man we went to church with for years and years and years, and he fell and 
and uh, broken vertebrae, and, and his son called or texted me today and said, would you pray uh, for dad today because you know, he's got a broken vertebrae and he's in the hospital, so we're going to, it's Gene, Terry. Yeah, so we're going to anoint you for Gene today. Father, in, in the name of Jesus, we anoint Gene. Father, thank you that he's the son of God. Thank you, Lord, that that he's given his heart and his life to you. He belongs to you, Father. You created him in his mother's womb. And according to your word, Lord, we anoint him with the oil of the Holy Spirit. That your word says that if any are sick among you, to anoint them, to anoint them with oil, pray the prayer of faith, and they shall be healed. And so, Lord, we pray the prayer of faith today. Faith in you. Not faith in anything we can do, but faith in what you've already done. Father, your word says that by his stripes we are healed. And, Lord, we proclaim that Gene has a right to be whole and be healed. Father, we speak to the vertebrae of his neck, to all the nerves that are encased. Father, I thank you that that damage is being repaired right now. Lord, that he'll not be hindered. He'll be able to walk and move and do everything that uh, that he's been called to do. Father, everything that you created him to do. And Lord, we just bless him today. And Father, pray peace over Dennis. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just anoint Emma. Lord, we bless her right now and call her whole and healed. We anoint her with the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I just thank you that the oil flows over her right now in the Spirit. Lord, she is being completely and totally healed. Father, everything that's not in alignment with, with your word that says she's healed, Lord, has to come in alignment. Father, we declare it to be so. Father, we stand and mix our faith in agreement. Your word says if any two or three three touches anything, they have what they ask for. And Lord, as we stand in agreement with Sherry today, and, and in agreement with your word, Lord, she's whole. She's healed. We bless her today. Father, I thank you that she'll testify and glorify the name of Jesus for her healing. Jehovah Rapha. And she'll proclaim that Jehovah Rapha has touched me and I've made, been made whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We declare it to be so. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just rebuke arthritis, tendonitis, bursitis, any itis, inflammation in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. We just proclaim that he is whole and he is healed. Father, it's for us as right as a son of God to be able to move his arm without pain to, de to declare the glory of the Lord. Father, I thank you that even now a movement is coming, Lord, pain is going. Father, any calcium that might be that might be there right now that's this. For any inflammation, Father, we declare it has to go. Father, we anoint him with the oil of joy for, whole, for, for his healing today. Father, flow through this elbow, flow through this body. We declare that he's, he is made whole, Father, by your blood that, that you took, the blood that flowed from your back, Father, as you took those stripes for us, that we might be able to walk as whole men and women without pain and, Father, with, without hindrance from our physical bodies. Father, I thank you that, that rest is more than a conqueror yeah. through Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your Lord. Okay. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just agree with Josh for his grandmother and his mom. Lord, we, as we anoint them both right now with oil. Father, we pray the prayer of faith. That faith is, is completely in you, in what you have done. But Father, we call them whole and healed right now. Whatever, we don't know, I don't know what the, the issue is, but Lord, you do. And Father, you, you knit them together in their mother's womb. You know the days of their lives. Father, you know what's caused the injuries or what's caused the sickness. And Father, you can make it go. You are the great physician. And we declare health, wholeness. Father, uh, just strength returning to their bodies where they need to be strengthened. And Lord, we declare that they are whole and healed according to your word. Father, we agree, with, uh, we agree with Josh right now in Jesus' mighty name for his mother and his grandmother. Father, let your oil, the oil of your healing, just flow over them right now. And Lord, we declare them to be daughters of God, walking in faith, walking in holiness in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay. Terry, put your hand on her phone. For a second there. On, on, on Jill's baby. On Jill's baby, okay? Father, we just we thank you for the baby that's in Jill's womb, yes. Father. And Lord, as we as we lay hands on her together, we declare, Father, that no harm has come. 
you look in Psalm 91, it tells us that, that there are a thousand may fall at your right and ten thousand at your left, but the Lord no harm will come near her dwelling place. And Father, we just declare that today over Jill and over that baby, Father, that, that everything is intact, every every membrane and everything that, that, that is being, uh, all the work that you are doing, knitting that baby together in the womb, Lord, it is, is perfect. Lord, we just declare that over her right now. Father, we, we pray over Jill, Lord, that knows she can sustain no damage to her body. And Lord, whatever bruising or pain there might be has to go with her. And Lord, Jesus, and we just declare right now, Father, I know your hand is watching over them. Right now, your, your, your eye is on them. You know even this, when a sparrow falls. And Lord, you know what's going on in Jill and her baby's life. And Father, thank you that for the plans that you have for baby and mom. And Lord, we declare that the enemy will not will not hinder them, will not, will not get in the way or impede them from doing what you've called them to do. And we declare life, wholeness, and health over them. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Christian. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Father, we just pray over Chris right now. And Lord, I just pray that he's in the bed right now where he can feel your power flowing through him. Lord, we just declare that he's the son of God. And Lord, we call him back. Father, we pray over every every seed of the word that has been planted in his life from the day that he was a baby till, till he was a young man. And Lord, we remember, we remember the days he walked in your ways. And Lord, no, Father, I thank you that you just created a hunger in his life to return to that. Father, I pray that, that all of the can all the condemnation that the enemy has tried to bring on him, Lord, has got to go. Because there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And Lord, I just pray that as Chris lays on his bed, that he realizes, you know what? In my father's house, Lord, there's love and there's food and there's blessing and there's goodness. And I think I'm going to go back there. Lord, I pray right now that he, that any feeling of unworthiness that he might feel, Lord, has to go in the name of Jesus. And he will say, he'll remember, I have the right to be whole and healed. I don't. I don't have to have a, a body that's with lack of allergies and laying in bed and not being able to do anything. He's a young, strong man. And Father, I just speak life and health over him right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we just declare that the oil and the Holy Spirit flows through his body. Lord, and, and all that stuff that affects his, his, his sinuses and his nose and his lungs and his eyes, Father. Uh, Lord, you just bring it to nothing. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. And we speak that over Christ today. By your blood that you shed on the cross and you can move on that whipping post, Lord. Father, by his stripes, Chris is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this man of God who walks in your way. And Lord, as he walks in your way, he has the right to walk pain-free, to move his joints. And Lord, you speak to the to every joint, Lord. And, and Father, thank you. That there's freedom of movement, there's freedom from pain. Lord, be anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Lord, just as oil lubricates the joints of the motor, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit just lubricate his joints. And Father, we just declare health, life, and healing over Roger, a man of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray for Pat. Lord, we, we, you heard those three things that he just declared that he, he needs healing and in restoration. And Father, we just agree with him. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we anoint him with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we know that you can intervene in his body. You can intervene in the court case. And the, what was the other in the car? Oh, yes. So, Father, you can restore every... Uh, every family relationship that has been that the enemy has tried to hinder and father we just declare that your holy spirit is at work right now in past life in all these areas that he's requested and father thank you that he's a man of faith he trusts you he believes your word and father i thank you your word says that he'll never be put to shame and we declare your life and your glory in his life in jesus mighty name amen, amen. you're welcome <laughs> Let me do. amen well, if you stand to your feet, we're going to have our ushers come and prepare the table of the Lord and we'll receive communion together this morning. 
if you if you can't get up, we'll have the ushers deliver communion to you. If you're visiting with us today, want me to know that you are welcome to come and and, uh, and receive the table of the Lord with us today. We're doing communion. <coughs> Praise them, all creatures here below. Praise them, all you heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, as we stand before you today, a family, a family of God, body of Christ, we thank you for the bread that we hold. Thank you that it does represent the body of our Savior. Lord, I thank you it represents the bread of presence. And Lord, we thank you most of all for your presence here with us. Lord, that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. Because of your great love for us today. Thank you, Lord, that by his stripes we are healed. And we just declare healing over our body. That we would, we would walk in your supernatural health. Because of what our Savior has done for us. Lord, as we receive this bread, we recognize all of the gifts. And all of the goodness that we have received. Because of your great love towards us. Because our Savior came to the earth and lived as a man. Died as a man. Went to the cross, was buried in the grave, but has been resurrected and lives forevermore. Father, we thank you for this bread today, and we receive it with thanksgiving. You can receive the bread. Amen. Praise you, Lord, for the cup. Thank you, Father, for the blood of our Savior that was shed for us. Lord, the price that was paid once and for all, so that all men might be saved. Lord, I thank you that all of our sins have been plunged under the blood of Jesus Christ, and we can stand before you white as snow. 
Father, the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, and it's only because of your love. Thank you for it. You can receive the cup. Hallelujah. I'll testify first. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I thank God that I don't have to struggle to stand up all the way through praise and worship anymore. Because I'm getting better. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, Miss Karen. Right here, love. Trust me, right here. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm very thankful for my brothers and sisters who are always there and God works and works through them. And so Amen. Um, I'm also thankful there's a doctor this week that was working on me and he was talking to me about the things in the surgery and he went on and on about God. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful to have the doctor that is not down. Amen. Amen. The only thing better than a testimony. Two testimonies. <laughs> Who else? Anybody else? Miss Lori. Huh? Oh. Well. <laughs> the um, teens and all the people in, in our church helped out. Uh, Debbie. Or Della. 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 Yes. Holy. And she sent us a thank you note um, for helping the homeless community. And so, what a blessing. Amen. And, and it is to be a blessing to them. So, thank you all. Hallelujah. Amen. Any other stuff we can, we know who to give to now. Yes, Amen. I will take anything. We help people in fires and that lose everything or just the homeless in general. We are really helping a lot of people. So, Amen. we'll take anything. Dishes, curtains. Good work. Bedding. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff. Who else? Well, Mom? Thank, the Lord, thank the Lord for a good sale this uh, weekend. He helped me uh, a lot. A car, neither car sold, but one sold after the sale one wasn't even supposed to sell. So I thank the Lord. Amen. 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 Mom? I have to come over and try to lay down on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who else? I think one of the, um, Caleb and I, some of you know that Caleb and I are avid, avid uh, geocache crazy people. I mentioned it a week ago on Wednesday that we were out hiking and I had uh, taken a five foot fall and right leg got caught in a tree root and I'm thankful that I didn't break anything so that he was there. Amen. Hallelujah. Vander? What's your testimony today, Bob? to the possum that it could be done. <laughs> Anybody else? I just want to thank the Lord for helping me with school and everything. I'm on the Dean's List yeah. and oh President's God, Award, so 4.0, plus work and live. So. Amen. I, these list is good. Yes. And Olivia told me today that Melissa graduated with the honors in Spanish National Honor Society. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's going to RN school. That's awesome. Very good. Anybody else? Yes, Doug. Uh, there may be people who seem like they get away with it here on the earth, but they don't have to God sees everything. Nobody can get away with anything. That's right. Amen? That's right. All right. Oh, Pat. Thanks for your prayer, Pastor Wayne. You're welcome, sir. The car uh, situation, uh, I've been driving the car without the engine stopping while driving the car. That's <laughs> very good. That's a, that's critical. That's a critical. That's very important. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, you can be seated. And I believe...
I believe that Ina and Keith are going to come receive our tithes and offerings this morning. You know, I, I, I prepared a message today, um, really to, actually, part of the main focus is to honor mom and dad, a little bit, 
but really to honor all your kids can go. I'm sorry. But really also to talk about marriage and to, to glorify God's idea of marriage. Amen. Because, you know, our, we live in a society where we don't have, our kids don't have the right heroes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And because of that, we get our, our we get our goals mixed up. I was reading some stuff uh, from from a pastor, and he said, and he said, um, you know, as as husbands and wives, we need to we need to imagine the last day of our life together. What do you want the last day of your life as a husband and wife to be? And then work back from that and make that happen. And you know. Uh, I don't know if mom and dad did that or not, but it, it's impressive to be married for 60 years. We don't. Yet that used to be the norm, and our society is moving away from that. But we need to move back towards that. And, and it, judgment begins at the house of the Lord. We need to. We should be modeling. The church should be modeling that. But the church shouldn't be. Um, and and I'll just preface all this with this: If you're divorced, I understand. No, no condemnation from me, but I'm going to talk to you about marriage today, what God's perfect plan, what God, you know, we, we need to preach what God's perfect idea is to our kids so that they know that's what I'm shooting for. That's what the real, that's what the real goal should be, that one man joins with one woman till death do us part and we live our life together. And not every family is perfect. Not every family has done that. Um, and so, and that's fine. You know, that's why God... That's why God forgives us and He blesses us and He restores us. Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't preach and glorify um, what God's real plan for us is, is and what He intended. So you're in John chapter 17, right? Maybe. About verse, uh, we're going to start verse 20. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we receive your word today, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are welcome in this place. Lord, let our prayer every day be, you are welcome in this place, in our hearts, and in our lives. Father, open your word to us today, in Jesus' name, amen. It says, my prayer is not for them alone, I pray also for those who will, this is Jesus praying, who will believe in me through the message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me. That they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me. May, be, may we be brought into complete or to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. You know, I, was, I had a sermon prepared on marriage and to one of my devotionals today in uh, um, Oswald Chambers talked about this verse. That we be one. And I was, and I was, of course, been thinking about marriage this week, and and uh, isn't that what God said about marriage? That the two become one. Mm-hmm. That's the that that is, and and um, I get ahead of myself a little bit. We'll read the scripture a little bit later, but it says that this is the mystery. That this is the mystery of of, of one man joining with one woman. And, and living there, that, that they become one. That's, a, that's the mystery of God's plan for marriage. And you know what? There, there's no mystery in what's happening in our world today when it's when, regarding men and women. Uh, it is basically our carnal nature running amok, where it's sex wherever, whenever, with whoever, whatever. And you know, that's not God's plan. There's no mystery in that. The animals do that. But there is a great mystery and a great, and a great wonderful thing that happens when a young man and a young woman become married and they become one and they live their life together in unity and walk that out all their days. And I, I'll say this to you. If you're divorced and remarried right now, you should love your spouse and thank God for, for them and believe that the rest of your days you are going to, you know, that God has redeemed your life and you are going to walk 
the rest of your days and you are joined and that mystery can begin in your life and you are gonna you're gonna fulfill God's plan for your marriage that you are in right now. Amen. Amen. Amen? Right. <clears throat> I need I need four readers. Loud voices. Nobody nobody can read. <laughs> okay. Ray? Proverbs twelve four. Terry. Proverbs eighteen twenty two. Who else? Have your hand up. I'll have to start drafting. Ellen. Ellen. Proverbs 19, 14. <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> Proverbs 31, 10. Whatever you well, hold on, Brad. Let me. That's just what I was it's gone. Out. It's right here. <laughs> well, turn around and project, then. Yeah, rock it. Just, uh, just the one verse. Just four. Just, yeah, just Proverbs twelve four. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraced wife is like decaying his bones. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Proverbs eighteen twenty two. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. Proverbs nineteen. Amen. One more. Stephen. A wife, a noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. You know what? <clears throat> Here's what I think. A lot of girls, and a, and a lot of men as well, deal with self-esteem issues. But it seems to be a, a girl thing more than a guy thing. And I think the writer and God is saying this to our daughters to say, you know what? You're valuable. You are a, a, a godly, graceful woman of noble character is more precious than gold and silver and jewels and anything that, that you could, um, that, that we, that man looks at as value. But a, a, that woman who is a godly woman is precious. And God is, is speaking that to, you know, to our daughters and saying, look, you know, the, the, there, is more, there is more blessing and more honor in serving God and doing things God's way than there is in following after the ways of the world. Um, I, I want to jump ahead a little bit in my uh, sense of, turn to the Song of Songs. Uh, chapter 8, verse 8. See, I lay these things out in my head, and I think the way it should go, and then I get speaking, and it comes out different. So we'll, we'll jump in. We have a young sister, and her breasts are not yet grown. What shall we do for our sister for the day? She is For the day she has spoken oh, for. Sorry. If she is a wall, we will build towers of silver on her. If she is a door, we will enclose her with panels of cedar. I wish all of our young girls, I wish yes. my daughters were here. Uh, yeah, have you ever read Song of Song, Song of Song? <laughs> Make you blush a little bit. Um, what's, uh, what the, what's the writer trying to say here? He's, he's saying, look, as a, as a young lady, as a young woman, and, and they're speaking of their sister, if she's a wall, We'll build a tower of silver for her. We'll honor her. We'll glorify her. But if she's a door, we're going to build a cage and lock her in. A wall. And several times, you know, several times in, in the Song of Songs, the author says, you know, don't, don't rush love. Don't jump in, you know, wait until the, the time for love comes. And, he, and, he's, and he's speaking to young ladies saying, look, don't be a door, be a wall. Be a righteous wall who holds, who holds back and holds off on, on sex and, uh, and, and becoming one with someone until it's time, until it is the right time. And there's only one right time, that's after we're married, right? Exactly. Amen. <laughs> yes. And, and it, it, you know, it was, it was right in the Bible days, and it's right today. 
the, the, it was wrong. Fornication was wrong in the Bible day, and it's, and it's wrong today. Just because everybody, just because the whole world may, say, may be comfortable with it, doesn't mean that it's not still said and not still wrong. Amen. That's right. Amen. And and it and it still is damaging. It still is as hurtful. And, and don't get me wrong, the, the, the Bible speaks to the men too. The Bible speaks to the young men in Proverbs that goes over and over and over again about, you know, don't don't go to the harlot. Don't be around the adulterer. Stay away. You know, wait until. Look while well, I read you a verse. Proverbs 5, verse 11. Go over there. <clears throat> It says, at the end of your life, listen, that he, he's speaking about, he's telling his sons, stay away from, uh, uh, all right, I'm going to talk straight to you today, okay? If I turn red, don't make fun of me. <laughs> he's saying, he's telling them, stay away from loose women, speaking to your sons. At the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say how I hated discipline, how I how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or listen to my instructors. I have come to the brink of utter ruin in the midst of the whole assembly. And here's this is what God wants for us. He says, drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams in public in the public squares? Let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. <clears throat> may your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. A loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be captivated by her love. Why be captivated, my son, my son by an adulteress? Why embrace the bosom of another man's wife? For a man's ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all his paths. Doug, is just what we were you were talking about. You know? You reap what you sow. And even though you don't, you think you might have got away with it, you didn't get away with anything. But God's, <clears throat> God's, plan, God's plan for us is that, you know, you fall in love with a beautiful woman, and, and you love her, and, and she satisfies you all the days of her life. And that you may remain, you remain true to one another. And, you know, thank God. I'm, I, I, we still have a chance. <laughs> <clears throat> and you know what? My mom and dad walked that out for 60 years. And have, have been walking that out in front of me for 60 years. It didn't happen, you know. That's, that stuff doesn't happen. Be we have, if we don't if we don't model stuff in front of our kids, they're not going to see the right way, right? <clears throat> I remember the remember that drug commercial. Back, some of you remembers it, uh, where the the dad's got the the box of dope and he's got the cigar box full of dope and he's got the kid on his bedroom and he's going, "Where'd you get this? Where'd you get this? Who taught you to do this? Where'd you get it?" And the and the it says. You, Dad, I learned it from you. You know, if we model bad behavior before our kids, that's what we we'll get. I've told you a story about Kelsey, right? <laughs> She's not here. It's great. I can tell any story I can want to tell about Kelsey now. <clears throat> Peggy, when we got, when we were just youth pastors, Peggy had a habit of saying a bad word. You, I know that's hard for you to believe. <laughs> it's kind of like darn it, only one darn it. You know? And um, Casey, or Kelsey was just like a uh, Libby's age, about Libby's age. And we, it was after church, and Steve and Sheila Willis were the pastors of our church, and and uh, we're all we were standing with Sheila, right, like you know, right going out the doors, and Kelsey couldn't get her shoes on. And she's right in front of Peggy and Sheila, and I'm standing there, and and she can't get her shoe on, and she cuts loose with Molly's word. <laughs> and, and Peggy's face turned the color of Ellen's uh, dress, and, and Sheila Willis laughed, 
It's like, she ain't heard it from me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm thankful that my mom and dad modeled. You know, I'm sure they fought. I'm sure they had difficult times. And, and you know, we never really knew it if they did. But uh, they walked that out. At what God's what God's plan for marriage is for our kids. And, and, um, and like I said, if, if, if you've been divorced and you walk it out for them now. With the husband or wife that you have now, walking out for them, love them, you know, and, and we, God's our redeemer, right? He's our restorer. Turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Don't worry, i got to pick up the pace because I've told too many stories, but God said this, let us make man in our own image. And it says male and female did he make them, right? And, and, he, and it says that God, if you read through that scripture at the end, it says that he looked at everything that he made. They said it's good. And then in, in, in Genesis chapter 2, it says that he formed Adam out of the dust of the earth. And he made him male and female. And, and he looked at Adam and he said, it's not good that he be alone. And he caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he, he, caught, he caused this deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he took, from, he took from Adam's side a rib and he formed out of Adam this woman, Eve. And, he, and, he, and, I, and I imagine that he formed Eve with as much care as he formed Adam. That's why you girls are a little more refined. Those men were made out of dirt. You guys were made from, <laughs> uh, from Adam's rib. So, you know, you're a, little, you're a little more refined than us men are. But Adam, I, I mean, Adam woke up and he looked at this creature that God had created. I mean creature in a good way. He looked at this creature that God had created for him. And you know, he didn't go, wow, now you know I got somebody to cook for me. <laughs> That's good. But I know he didn't say, oh, I've got somebody to do my laundry, you still walk around naked. Right? He looked at her and he said something, something very interesting. He said, now this is bone of my bone. And flesh of my flesh. And for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother. And shall cleave unto his wife. And the two became one. You know Adam, Adam looked at Eve and, and, and realized that this was. He would be, I'm sure he was in awe of Eve. And in awe of what God, of the precious gift that God had given him in, in, this, in this creature that he had created for him. Let me turn back there. You got, are you up there? Verse 21. <clears throat> Go back to verse 24 for a second. Yeah. <clears throat> and they will become one flesh. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a mysterious thing that happens. When husband and wife are joined. And, and, it, and it is a wonderful thing. It's a precious thing. And it, it's, a, it's a mysterious thing that we don't really understand. And, and, what, our, and what our young people don't understand. Is that when, when that is done improperly. And without the covering of marriage. That, that there's something that happens. And it is a perversion and a distortion. And, and you think that wow well, it's just. It's just yeah. sex. And you get away with it. Well, as long as I didn't get an STD. No. Soul, in your soul realm, in your, it, it, in your mind, those things are formed. And there are things that are formed that are difficult to get out of your mind. There are things that aren't supposed to be there. There are things that after you're, when you do get married, there are things there, there are memories and, and feelings and things that aren't supposed to be there that are there. I'm so proud of Kelsey and Jonathan that they, you know, they did it the right way. They both they waited until they were married before they, they had sex. And you know what? <clears throat> until the wedding, we didn't really know whether we didn't really know whether he loved her or not. Because I mean, for they've been dating for a while, they would hardly even I mean that if they sat on the couch watching a movie and touched each other, I mean just leaning on each other or holding hands, that was that was something. 
And to see him, you know, he was saying these vows, and he got all choked up and started crying. And that was the first time that I was like, huh? <laughs> you know? And I, and I realized, you know, they were, they were avoiding that temptation. And, and I'm just very proud of them. Very, very proud of them. So anyway, that's, she's here. I can tell bad stories on her. I can tell good stories on her. <laughs> now, I never put two and two together until I was thinking about this. Do you know what happened? And, you know, this wonderful thing happens. You know, Adam wakes up from this deep sleep. He's got this precious creature that he says, now she's bone my bone, flesh my flesh. We are one flesh together. We are married. This is my wife. I'm going to keep her forever. And do you know what happens in Genesis chapter 3? What the first sentence of Genesis chapter 3 is? Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the other beasts of the field. It was almost immediate that Satan came in and tried to get between Adam and Eve. That he tried to destroy that precious thing that, that Adam and Eve, that God had created for that husband and wife. You know, he, he tempted Eve to eat the apple, or to eat the fruit, whatever it was, to eat of that tree. And Adam was right there with her. They were in it together. They did it together. And immediately, when God came walking in the garden, Adam, wait, where are you? Well, I'm over here hiding, God, because I'm naked. Who told you you're naked? Did you eat of that tree? Well, you, you know, God is that woman. That woman, that you, that, you know, you made her, you, that woman. And, and the fight was on. <laughs> Eve, what'd you do? He's a snake. He did. You know, and, and and you just look what that's created on the news. It's his fault, it's her fault, it's their fault, Bubba's fault, George Bush's fault, everybody's fault. And and so, you know, the, I was amazed by that. Immediately the devil came to try to destroy and I'll tell you the verse that came to my mind was about the word. You know, the summer so is the word. And the, and some falls on the path, and immediately the devil comes and tries to take up what is good, tries to destroy and get rid of what God has created and said that it is good. And so God, it's not a, it's not a mystery that the devil, has, that we are at a place that we are, that the enemy is attacking marriage and what God has created. He's been doing it since Adam and Eve. Since, you know, since right after Adam created, or God created Eve for Adam. And he came to, I mean, the serpent was right there to try to destroy what God had put together. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. Um, this is, this is uh, Jesus speaking. He says, haven't you read, he replied, that, the begin at, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female. And said, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Amen. You know, that it, I, I explain when I do marriage counseling that, you know, it doesn't matter what what man says, what, what courts may decide. God says marriage is one man, one woman. And what God has put together, let no man separate. Amen. And that's, that's his perfect plan for us as... Um, as men and women who are married together. And God's best is that mysterious joining of a husband and a wife together. That they become that they become a team working together, functioning together. Not and, and I think it's in, I think it's important and I've heard you've heard a lot of ministers talk about that Eve was taken from Adam's side. Yeah, and the Bible tells us that a, a hus or wife is supposed to submit to her husband. But they, a husband and wife, walk together. It's not a, um, you know, I don't rule over Peggy. I don't, I don't keep her. She's not a second-class citizen in our home. Quite the opposite, you know. The truth is that, the truth is that that's her house, and she lets me live there. <laughs> Hallelujah! It's mysterious till death do us part, and. <clears throat> And you know we live in a world where we see, um, we see the, the opposite. The, we put the opposite up in front of our kids. You know, we, we watch TV, we watch the movies, we see, 
uh, we see and we glorify. Actually, the media glorifies men who have lots of lovers, and and now women who are who you know there's no shame in, in running around anymore. Um, this is a little bit off the beaten track, but I, I want to. I, Every year I go to some high school football games. I like to go to Marietta High School football games. I wish they were better. I'd go to more if they would start playing. Um, I always park over at Apex and walk through because I know the, I know Phil and Molly Schramm sell tickets there and I get to talk to Phil and Molly for a little while. But then I walk under the scoreboard and around the field to go to, and there's always, there's always a bunch of 7th, 8th, ninth grade kids running around. They may be younger than that, running around. And right there in the football, if you've ever been there. I am appalled at the language of the little girls. I, it's amazing to me. Not so much the boys. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, boys, bad. We've been cussing and, and, doing, and doing stuff, but the, the, the level, the, I mean, I, I don't know where, it's, it's just a complete breakdown uh, and and I'm, I'm told by a lot of school teachers that it's those little girls now who are aggressive towards the boys and that's there's been a there's been a complete breakdown in our society because we have glorified and set up the wrong things and we've told we've told we've shown pictures of actresses and people who, do, who play rock and roll and do stuff and live that way and we've glorified that and our little girls think that that's what they're supposed to be that that's that's what um, that men want that you know and that's not that's not and and i wish our i wish our girls were here and anyway, i wish my other two that aren't married were here today because it's not it's not that kind of woman that is more precious than jewels. It's that wife of noble character. It's that woman of noble character. It's that one who is godly, who, whose husband can stand and be proud of her and know that she's a woman of dignity and a woman of character. And that's who we need to raise our little girls up to be. Amen. And, <clears throat> you know, and, and I, I would like to tell them, and what we need to tell our little girls is this. There's, and our young men. There's nothing special about that lifestyle. The animals live that way. The dogs run around. I had a, I had a, 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 a Yorkshire Terrier when I was growing up. I bought him in the sixth grade. And about every three or four months, he, he disappeared. He'd be gone. He'd find some dog in heat somewhere, and he'd be gone for three or four days, and he'd come back. His hair would be all matted. He'd be nasty. He'd stink. And, you know, you have to throw him in the tub and, and clean him up. And it's just a dog, you know? And, and, and our, our kids think that that's the right way to live. And that's not the right way to live. There's nothing special about it. But, but love between a husband and a wife. And when they're joined in a godly union as a husband and a wife to, to be together for, the, for all the days of their lives, there's a mystery in that. There's special, there's, there's something supernatural about that. That that's what we're to shoot for. I, you know, we're we're Christians, right? We're not we're not people who settle for natural. We are people who expect supernatural, right? And we have the right to expect that in our marriages. We have the right to expect that and, and show our kids this is what God wants us to be. He wants you to be joined together and be special. That your, your husband is a gift from God. Your wife is a gift from God. And you treat her that and you cherish her. And, and, and that, that honor comes from our character. That, that godly character that's inside us. Not in the, in the, way, in, not in, in, in the, in the way that we might live carnally. And, and, and the, what we see on TV is junk. That's exactly what, where the devil wanted to take us. Because that's the destruction of what God created in the garden when he created Adam and Eve. That's right. Amen. He's taken us completely for, away from that spiritual, supernatural union of a husband and a wife to just carnal, animalistic behavior. And we need that back. 
we need to we need to model it. Like I said, whether you're if you're married today, you need to be modeling that with your with your spouse. That there is a you know the Bible says that a threefold cord or threefold cord is not easily broken. It's you and your husband or your wife and God together that form that threefold cord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Turn to Hebrews chapter thirteen. And I'll close. <laughs> Hebrews chapter thirteen. We're going to read verses four through seven. It says, here. <clears throat> I never really caught that first sentence. Marriage should be honored by all. Amen. Marriage should be honored by all. And you know, if, if everybody's supposed to honor it, then we need to treat it honorably ourselves, right? Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed be kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence. The Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, you know, number one leader, the number one leaders in my life were my mom and dad. And I, I am so thankful that they, you know, I'm, they're not perfect. They fight. They fight more than they used to. Because <laughs> dad's not afraid to speak his mind now. He just doesn't be quiet. Um, but they loved each other. And I tell every young couple that I marriage counsel. And, and every young couple with kids that I get a chance to. I, especially the men. Because the greatest thing, the greatest thing that any man can do for his kids is love their mother. Dad taught me how to how I should treat women. I didn't always listen. But I was learning. You know, it takes some of us a little longer to to get it. You know, mom showed me what a home is supposed to, my mom and dad both showed us, showed me what a home was supposed to be. And I'm very thankful for that. And we can, we can lament where our kids are. We can, we can talk about their generation and say that, you know, well, I don't know how they got there. Well, they got there because they didn't, because we didn't, probably because we didn't model what what it should have been before them. They got the wrong heroes. They, they're not imitating. Um, they're not imitating the leaders in their life. They're imitating the people. Who they think are having fun. And the people that they think. Are, are glorious. And they're not glorious. And I'll tell you this. God's a redeemer. He can redeem our kids. Doesn't matter. It doesn't. You know, God can restore our kids. God can redeem our kids. You know, God has always been a God who says, "I'll forgive you. Just turn from your wicked ways and walk after me, and 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 uh, you know, and He can fix it." And I thank God for you, husbands and wives here. You know, and I know some of you have been been married before, and that's okay. But you're loving, the, you're loving your spouse now. And you're with your spouse now. And you're loving. You're walking that out. And thank God for that. Um, marriage, is a, it, marriage is an important thing. It's a, it is the building block of the family. And, it is, it's the, and, and our, our city is built on families. Our country is built on families. 
and and our and our prayer should be God restore our families, restore our husbands and wives. Let us once again glorify not not the model of the world, but the model of a godly husband and wife, godly grandma and grandpa to to, to walk that out before uh, our kids, because that's what they need. We need and we need to get their attention. You know, it, it never that. I know I told you I closed, but that. It's that one, that verse in Psalms, or not Psalms, Proverbs, about the men, to the young men. When he says, look, my life has come to ruin. I have, I have not um, paid attention to my instructors. I've not, look, I've not, you know, yielded to their discipline, something along those lines. You know, eventually, that's what happens. Um, you know, that. The, the Bible says that there's pleasure in sin for a season. And our kids go out, think they're having fun, think that they're, you know, that they're going the way that they should go. And they're, they're, they're. And then the devil gets you out there far enough to where he has robbed and stolen everything from you. And, and your life is in ruins and you go, how did I get here? I got here because I didn't listen. I didn't look at, I didn't have my eyes on the right I didn't have to follow the right example. And so that's the message that we need to get to our kids. You know? There's a, when you get to the end, look at the end. Here's what what do you want to have when you're when you're 65 or 70? Do you want to have godly kids and a house and a, and a wife and a woman of uh, you know one husband and one wife and a great family? Well that has to start when you're at the beginning. Amen. I have a really, I have a really good friend, and I love him dearly. And he'll tell me, "Man, I wish I had what you had, what you had. I wish I had done it the way that you did it." And I, and I can't tell him, you know. Well, I can tell he's, he's my age, so it's a matter. And I'm not saying he's a bad guy either. But when, if we follow the wrong patterns. It leads. Sorry. You're shut down. That must have been. We follow the wrong patterns and we imitate the wrong people and we pursue the wrong things. We don't end up in the right place. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Mom, Dad, I love you. Thank you for being a good example, not only to me, but to you know people that that go to this church and everybody else. You. And I thank you, the rest of you husbands and wives who love each other and are sitting together today. And, and it's an awesome thing. It's a mysterious thing. Um, and it's a godly thing. Amen. And, and I'll put this charge on you. Our kids need us. Yes. They need to see that. They need to... I, I love to kiss Peggy in front of the girls, especially, well... Kelsey go, oh, doesn't bother Carrie, but Kelsey and Casey both, they don't like to see that. But they need to see that. You know, not gross stuff, you know, not slobbery stuff. But, you know, they need to know that I'm, a, I'm affectionate towards their mother. Amen. I love her and she's precious to me. Amen. All right. I don't normally do this, but does anybody have a question today? <laughs> Have I made anybody mad? Are you mad today? Bob, you mad? No. There's a t-shirt the kids are wearing I love. It makes me laugh. I don't know why. It says, you mad, bro? <laughs> the Lord said, we. That's the word. What's that? Instead we? One, instead, instead of one, one, we one, it's one. we. We. Everything is we. Yeah. Amen. I know the decisions I make. Yeah. <laughs> We usually get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we make them. <clears throat> I have a really, I have another really, really good friend. A couple really good friends, and we text back pretty regularly. And uh, one guy's named Greg, and uh, Brad Beal, who's a, you know, he, we're just close. He sends me a text the other day and says. Greg's wife, is, her name is Jane. And he says, I have a question. If Greg says something and Jane doesn't hear it, is he still wrong? 
<laughs> yes. 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 So, anyway. <clears throat> Probably another message. But you know what? Every, every this is closing number four. <laughs> I know there's lunch out there we're going to go eat to honor mom and dad. But, um, but you know, have you noticed all the six, uh, by all the sitcoms back in the 70s, 80s, they really make fun of dads. They really make fun yes. of, of the fathers. And that, I want you to know, that was, that was a, a planned strategy of the enemy to, to deteriorate the honor of the, the father and husband is supposed to have. So, amen. Wives, honor your husbands in front of your kids. I love you. God bless you. We're going to have lunch today. I want you all to stay. You can stay for a few minutes, you know, or you can stay for a long time. It doesn't matter. Ina has, she's worked really hard. Ina and Keith, there's fried chicken and uh, baked beans and potato salad and macaroni salad and hamburgers and hot dogs. And all to, to honor mom and dad. So I hope you're surprised. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for our husbands and wives. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to settle for what's natural, but we can be, we can be supernatural in our, our married lives with our spouse. Father, let us realize that, that it's, it's a special bond that we have, something that you made just for us. Let us look at our spouse that way and model that for our kids. Father, I thank you for my mom and dad. I thank you for 60 years of marriage. I pray that they're blessed for as many more as they have, and I pray that it's a bunch that they have yet together here on this earth. And Father, we just pray for your word, that it finds a place in our hearts. Father, just heal every wound. Pray and sanctify and bless our food today, and let us have a great time of fellowship. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm sure it's ready. So, uh, if you just go out there, and if you got it in a hurry, go grab your hot dog and enjoy it. And give Grandma and Grandpa dear a hug and tell them congratulations. Hope they get 60 more. I don't want to say that.